Hey, welcome back to the Blue Trouser Brewery. I am going to be doing a brief review of the Pint 365 hand pull. So the Pine 365, it is out of the box a hand pull. It's easy to set up, it comes with some great instructions, and the benefit of a Pine 365 over a reconditioned or secondhand hand pull is the fact that you can use this with a corny keg. I was in the game for a hand pull and it is a good option for anyone that's considering getting a hand pull. I did think about getting a second hand or reconditioned hand pull. The secondary market for reconditioned hand pulls is in fairness relative to buying a new Pine 365. I think that was on the main what pushed me over to buying a Pine 365 which is effectively a brand new off the line hand pull. Pine 365 are producing hand pulls, new hand pulls, they're probably not up to the quality of your Angrams to be honest, but equally I didn't really fancy having to start, kind of source myself a second hand Angram or a second hand um, hand pull and having the risk that perhaps it wasn't working. Finding parts to it is quite challenging. Reconditioning it, all that sort of stuff. That said, since I've bought this, I've seen a massive surge in people buying second hand hand pulls and reconditioning them and doing it really successfully. So my friend at uh, Tricky at Dude Brews uh, has done it a couple of times. He's done some good videos on it. I've seen quite a few other guys managing to source them. And actually, it is a good, good option. If you don't mind get, getting your hands a little bit dirty, you can tend to find them a fair bit cheaper than what I paid for in terms of a Pine 365. If you want a no, for, a no fuss option, just a plug and play, um, the Pine 365 is great. Um, but I will go into a bit more of the detail of why it's a good product um, in a minute. Okay, so most of us as home brewers are, if we're past the point of bottling and carbonating in a bottle, which for the record is nothing wrong with that, but most people end up gravitating towards corny cakes. And the Pint 365 is great in the fact that it has a particular um, type of valve that can accept pressure on the back end, but pull when it's needed. So it's some, come some, it's some kind of check valve that is attached, which makes it ideal for that, that solution. Because ultimately, we don't really want to, as home brewers, bag up or put into a cask our beer, start to serve it and have to finish it in three or four days. Right? That's just not a realistic solution. Unless perhaps we're having some kind of party, which in the current environment we're not, then you want longevity of your beer as well as being able to serve it on a hand pull. 
the Pine 365 supplies that solution. You can adapt a reconditioned hand pull to do the same thing, but you need to be able to source that, figure it out, do all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you're not handy and you don't really fancy all that sort of stuff, then just don't bother getting yourself a Pine 365. Um, is it's a great option. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I have served up now two different beers, and really I want to fo focus on the first beer that I brewed for this purpose of serving on a hand pill, and that was Chris Millington's bitter recipe called Persistence, Persistently Bitter. Uh, Chris is a close friend of mine. He shared his recipe. This recipe he has been tweaking for I don't know how many different versions. And I have to say, this is an absolutely golden recipe. This thing is... It is beautiful in its simplicity. And my experience of having drunk it is that I drank it too quick. So I finished an entire 19 litre keg of it in two weeks. Two weeks flat. Which I know is probably not a very good thing for my health, but this beer was oh, something special. But I say I drank it too quick because when I got to say the last three or four pints, this thing just came alive. It went from something that was super drinkable, a beautifully crafted, fruity, pleasant beer, a nice bitter, to suddenly something that was deeply complex. Suddenly I was getting notes of chocolate and toffee and just wonderful malt complexity that I'm kicking myself for having not left the keg for six to eight weeks. I think it's that time period of conditioning that would make then the beer absolutely beautiful to drink from start to finish. I was too eager. I wanted to drink a beer from the, the hand pool that I'd set up and uh, I am going to brew this beer again and I will be disciplined enough to leave it until it's in its prime. So I'll give you an idea, guys, of the recipe for Persistently Bitter. So this is a 23 litre batch. It's intended to come in uh, at the high 3%, about 3.7, 3.8%. Um, it is 65% um, pale malt, uh, alternatively you could use Marisotta, uh, it's 11.7 or 12% amber malt, 9.5% Munich malt, 9% caramel 60 lover bond or 120 EBC and 5.3% 120 lover bond crystal malt at 235 EBC. So that's really where the complexity is coming in. There is amber malt, which is an absolute golden uh, addition to um, a bitter, and interestingly, some Munich malt. I personally used First Gold and East Kent Goldings, but I believe Chris's original recipe is First Gold and Fuggles. I didn't have any Fuggles, and I subbed it for EKG. Um, it's first gold at 60 minutes, 20 grams, 20 grams of EKG at 30 minutes, 18 grams of first gold at 5 minutes, and 15 grams of East Kent Goldings at 5 minutes. So you guys can find this recipe on the Brew Father Library. Um, I personally fermented this with Nottingham. I was in a bit of a pinch. Um, but I would personally recommend a more fruity English ale yeast, perhaps a Ringwood, or some kind of London ale yeast, maybe London Ale 3, 
um, really kind of any English, Scottish, Irish ale yeast would would be a good addition for this. Personally, I think the Timothy Taylor West Yorkshire ale yeast would be a good option. It is a beautiful beer, a beautiful beer, and I would strongly recommend that if you brew this beer, brew it on the intention of them putting it on a hand pull. Um, condition it for six weeks, and you are you're in for a treat. You are in for a treat. So that is my recommendation. That is my overall review of the Pint Three Six Five. It is a great product. It does what it says on the tin. It's plug and play. If you want something a little cheaper, by all means go out and source yourself a second hand. Um, or a, not so much a reconditioned hamper, but a reclaimed, should we say, hamper. Tart it up, recondition it, put the right valve on it, and you will be, um, you'll be appreciating that. I am really enjoying having a hand pull. I think the old English styles, the traditional styles, I think they're going to make a comeback. You know, I think we've probably had enough of soupy hot bombs and we're looking for something different, you know, and I think you'll enjoy that. I will just add a final note. The reason I'm not actually reviewing the persistently bitter beer is obviously because I drank it in two weeks and unfortunately I didn't get around to re recording this video in time which was um, schoolboy error so um, there you have it I hope you enjoyed the video definitely check out the persistently bitter recipe from Chris Millington if it's not on the Brewfather library, I will certainly tell Chris to put it on there. And um, yeah, go brew it, guys. If you like a bitter, this is a banger. Really nice. Just make sure you condition that bad boy and you will just get a beautiful, complex beer that is so drinkable. Cheers, guys.